Welcome to the first ever episode of WSD Voice. My name is Sarah Davis, and I am the Director of Communications and Community Relations for Waterford School District and the host of this podcast. I also have with me today the Superintendent of Waterford School District, Scott Lindberg. Hello to you, Scott. Hello, Sarah. Good to be here. We are so happy to have you on today. Typically, it will just be me hosting the show, but I wanted to bring you on as a special guest to talk about why we're launching this podcast, as well as to have you be part of our first conversation here. So I appreciate you being on. Why don't you give us a little insight as to why Waterford School District has decided to start this podcast? Sure. Thank you so much again for having me on here, Sarah. It is such an honor to be on the very first episode of Waterford's new podcast. So our goal with the WSD Voice is to utilize the podcast to reach anyone in our community who has an interest in better connecting with Waterford School District. My hope is that we can utilize WSD Voice to blast through the negativity out there and to showcase all the great work going on in the Waterford School District. Because let me assure you, there's plenty of it. Right. And like you said, it really could be anyone that would have an interest in tuning in, correct? Oh, absolutely. We know that it takes an entire village to help support our school district. We are lucky that our Waterford community has always been very generous to our students by supporting bonds and other initiatives that provide the best educational opportunities for our students. And with this in mind, we decided to create this podcast to keep that communication open. And I encourage our students, our parents, and our community organizations to tune in as often as they are able. And yeah, I'm really excited this for this. So let's get to it. For this first episode, we're going to feature two really important initiatives taking place inside Waterford School District. First, we're going to interview members of our Student and Family Engagement Department, otherwise known as SAFE. Then after that, we'll hear from teachers and students participating in Waterford's new problem-based learning K-8 through teaching initiative. So first, we will start with SAFE, and I'd like to welcome to the program Ashley Gray, coordinator for SAFE, and Allison Uplegger and Nichelle Clark, both behavior support specialists for SAFE. Thank you to all of you for being here today. Ashley, we'll start with you. Can you first give us a brief overview of what exactly the SAFE team is and what it is that SAFE does for Waterford School District? Definitely. Thank you for having us on the show today, especially your first guest. It's Mark's history right here. Um, but we have eight people on our team and we're ever growing. Um, the concept of the SAFE team was student family engagement. We really want to stand in the gap of student behavior in the classroom. We want to specialize our services to help students with social and emotional issues that impact the classroom achievement as a whole. Excellent. Uh, can you also talk about your, your team's secret sauce? I know you and I have met before and you brought this up, the secret sauce in particular, and touch on why family engagement is so important for the SAFE team. Definitely. Yeah, we, we kind of coined that term secret sauce because we really believe that our department stands in the gap again of just the needs for students because we have great teachers in Waterford who are teaching classrooms. And then we come in as a behavior team to work on individual sessions, um, which we try to uncover the stresses that impact kids in the classroom because every kid from K through 12 comes into the school with a lot of stresses, good or bad. They just coming to the classroom with specialized needs. So we try to de uh, develop that relationship individually with students, one-on-one -on -one sessions where we can try to support students and bring that back to the classroom. Um, then we have group sessions. Our goal is to create a positive environment to push students, to encourage them, because we know how important peers are for them to have an impactful outcome with making thoughtful decisions. The whole concept of our group sessions are making thoughtful decisions as it relates to peer environment and making decisions that uh, show them in the best light. And then we do our family piece. I really am big on family engagement because I believe family is the piece. We can pour into great kids in the school day, but they go back home to the family. So we want to build families up, support them, encourage them, and talk to them about the, the educational system. So how can they support their kid at home? Um, because every family has challenges, every family has gifts, and how can we support that and really highlight that for that student to be successful because ultimately when the student's successful, the families are successful. So those are our three key pieces that we feel like are the secret sauce to making our program great. 
Absolutely. Thanks, Ashley. Uh, Allison, what are some examples of how the SAFE team works with our elementary students? Yeah, thank you so much for having me on the show. Um, so in the elementary settings, like Ashley mentioned, um, we provide some one-on-one -on -one sessions to students that require more of that individualized care. Um, these would be students in elementary that are struggling behaviorally, whose behaviors affect either that theirs or others' learning. Um, they have unstable parent-family dynamics or are lacking um, important coping skills that are good to have in elementary. Um, this could look like kids that are leaving their seat consistently in class, um, physical aggression, unstable emotions, a lack of interest in their learning or friendships, um, stealing. Um, these are the, some of the students um, that we would also in, include in our group sessions. Um, small groups would usually be about three to five upper elementary students um, that are struggling with behaviors or some of those coping skills that I mentioned. Um, we meet once a week for about six weeks to discuss things like anger, conflict resolution, um, self-control, communication, um, some of the other skills. Um, groups give students the opportunity to discuss these skills with their peers, with the kids that are their age, um, and to discuss how it's affecting those that are like them. Um, it's less intimidating than meeting one-on-one -on -one for some of those kids that don't have that confidence. Um, so they work to improve their ability to make connections with those other students, understand the differing views of them, um, stimulate appropriate communication skills. Um, and then we also have, like Ashley mentioned, the parent meetings, which are extremely important when under try in trying to understand the full scope of the child's behaviors. Um, especially through this recent pandemic, it's become really difficult for teachers to meet with and effectively communicate with the families. Um, so having that outside outside resource, the, be, the behavior, the support specialists, um, allows for more flexibility and availability when meeting and talking with the parents. And it allows the teachers to place more emphasis on their academics and their learning, um, as opposed to focusing mainly on those behaviors. All right, thank you, Allison. Nichelle, you work more at the secondary level, implementing safe team practices with families. What are some examples of safe in action at the secondary level? Thank you for having me on the show. And at the secondary level, we really look to support students with skills and techniques that students can use when transitioning out of high school. Um, we do group sessions that focus on various topics, such as substance abuse, leadership, and transitions along with individual sessions where we can really spend time with each student and provide more customized support. Students that would receive individualized uh, sessions would be students who are acting out in class, unengaged, skipping, abusing substances, have a lack of healthy relationships and or negative peer groups, social isolation, etc. Our group sessions give the students the opportunity to interact with their peers, along with leading the direction of discussion for each group session. We also hold family sessions with our students' guardians to discuss home dynamics, behaviors they have noticed, and to get an idea of the underlying reasons their behaviors are occurring in school. We are also looking to provide the best practices and interventions, but also want the students' contributions to what sessions look like and what they are needing in terms of support for the week. We are also working on bringing new initiatives to our students and schools that support family engagement, peer-to-peer -peer engagement and support, along with social activities where we can really see our students shine. Yeah, and one of those that you recently had was the very successful Spelling Bee. Um, Ashley, can you kind of talk about some of those initiatives that your group has started? Yeah, so it's kind of crazy how um, I think our department is so fluent, fluid. Uh, we really trying to stand in the gap of any need. So we create a, um, we have staff meeting monthly or even weekly or sometimes even daily to say, hey, there's a need. How can we, our team, fill that need? Just as recent as uh, yesterday, we understand that we shifted to um, online learning. So we decided as a team, how can we have a study hall for all high school students? And that's just what we do um, because we really feel like, and as just the leader of this department, wherever there's a gap, where can we as a body of staff step in and try to support? So some of our initiatives are the Spelling Bee, um, where we work with elementary stu students trying to do, do and heighten and um, highlight different spelling words. And we had parents come out and participate. 
Um, we do the rising star, which is our um, highlighting behaviors. And it's not really those kids who always do well. It's those kids who really have made great improvements where they can see that they've, you know, changed their behaviors around. Then we have a kickball. Um, and that's really fun for all of our fifth graders. We just do a kickball tournament where the staff of each school, so they're playing against some of their teachers doing kickball. And it's really a fun opportunity where staff can come in and just help out and have a fun time. And then we have the basketball program for all nine of our elementary schools where we try to support there. And it is a fun, just, we have kids who are fourth and fifth grade who've never played basketball before, but they out there just trying to be positive and trying to, you know, score a basket in front of their parents. So it is fun opportunity. And all of these initiatives are really just to provide support to students, provide where they can really shine as students and build positive um, interactions with each other. Right. And you kind of touch on this next question by answering that. But, you know, SAFE can't do this all on your own. How, how can the community come together to support your team? Yeah, we're, we're always looking for ways the community can support. Um, sponsored dinners, we have a lot of families who struggle financially. How can they help out with sponsoring dinners? Allison is really big in the community. She has gone out and found different sponsorships for the Rising Star. And then when we had a teacher award, she found just gift cards to say, hey, here's a reward for you. Thank you. Um, so we're always looking for sponsors for dinners, student gifts, um, when kids make great improvement donations. Um, we had an issue with some kids who needed some gym shoes. We we're always looking for donations for clothing or shoes. Um, so the community or even just being, you know, a support to make a phone call and say, hey, you know, I'm the owner of such and such business. I heard you've done a really great job. I think just outside people just calling to support students is always helpful. So any support we will not turn down from the community or if the community has any ideas that they will say, hey, this is my talent. I would like to offer this up. We're always open to come up with creative solutions. Okay. And if anyone is looking to find out more info about SAFE or wants to contact the SAFE team, how can they go about it? Yeah, they can call our office at 248-257-6952, where they can just ask around. We're at every school in the district. They can just say, hey, where's the SAFE team member? And literally, <laughs> somebody will be there to support. All right. Perfect. Thank you, Ashley. So, Scott, what do you think of the SAFE team? What value are they bringing to the Waterford School District? Well, I, <clears throat> I think this team is just awesome. The fact that they step into the gap for so many of our kids, if you think about this is this is really what education and finding success for our kids is about. We all have gaps. I think every one of us, whether we were in the classroom ourselves or even today, but the fact that these, these uh, staff members want to step in and fill in the gap, whether it's shoes or recognition or programs to connect them to their school community is simply awesome. But, you know, SAFE standing for student and family engagement. If we know that if we don't have kids engaged in what we're doing in our schools, the academics are never going to come. And so that is what is so fantastic about this. Uh, I know this team's very passionate about that. And in fact, during this time of pandemic, we've added to this team this year because we know this is really where the rubber meets the road. And that is engaging our kids. And as Ashley talked about, engaging our families. So that, that connection happens beyond our school walls, but also in our homes as well. That makes a strong community. So um, I'm just very proud of this team. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you again to Ashley, Allison, and Nichelle for making yourselves available and being the first guests on WSD Voice. I appreciate your willingness to come here and talk about your amazing program, and I sure hope we can have you on the show again soon. So, Scott, up next on WSD Voice, we have some members of the problem-based learning team here to talk about their amazing work. I'd like to welcome to the show Elizabeth Kutchy, Assessment Coordinator for Waterford School District, Sue Case, third grade teacher at Grayson Elementary, and Clara Cavalli, a seventh grader at Pierce Middle School. Welcome all of you to WSD Voice. Elizabeth, we'll start, we'll start with you. Can you begin by informing our audience as to what problem-based learning is? Yeah, thanks for having me. So Problem-based learning is a teaching method in which students gain knowledge and skills by working for an extended period of time to investigate and respond to authentic, engaging, and complex questions, problems, or a challenge within their classroom. Um, typically, those PBL 
um, problems or challenges are presented to the public or to a group within the building so that they can celebrate as well as get feedback based on that problem that they've been researching and working on. Okay, and why did Waterford School District want to add PBL to its curriculum? So we wanted to add PBL, we saw it as a really adventurous opportunity for our students. Um, We saw that it had an opportunity to add that student voice and choice, growing that authentic learning for our students. Um, We noticed that students who really engross in the problem-based learning it moves that learning forward for lifelong and as far as well as um, for them academically throughout their careers. All right, great. So Sue, I know you're one of the leads for implementing PBL at the elementary level. Can you kind of talk about how that's been going? Sure, thanks for having me too. Um, It is going really well. It's amazing what the kids are able to do when they are given the opportunity and how much they really love doing real things. So it started out with our principal coming in and we kind of set it up that she wanted some help with designing our new playground. So we're using the bond dollars to do that. And I love that she wanted the kids to design it because the playground is for the children. So she asked for our help and our class realized that it wasn't just for our class. So we started off with surveying the school and we found out what their priorities were and what they really wanted. So the kids were thinking beyond themselves. We even interviewed one of our students who's blind and another um, student who has quadrup- who is a quadriplegic. So we found out the priorities of the principal. One thing she wanted to do was to get rid of that pea gravel. It's dusty and sometimes they get put in places, the gravel is put in places that maybe aren't the best choices. So um, the kids were given choices for which pieces of equipment they might be able to choose from. They were given a real budget that they had to stay in. They read articles about playground safety, inclusion, different learning styles and playing styles. So we wanted to have a playground, not just for our very athletic kids, but also for the artistic kids. Uh, They measured the area of the pea gravel to be replaced and used Google maps to measure the area for the larger areas of pea gravel. They critiqued each other's designs And we even met with a professional playground designer who critiqued ours. And amazingly, we critiqued his back too um, because he was wanting to put a piece of equipment by classrooms and we realized that that would be very distracting. So um, it it was happening both ways. The playground professional took some of our advice and made sure that he was going to be including swings for handicapped kids and, you know, thinking about placements more now than he knows really how our school would be using it. That's awesome, Sue. Um, I love the idea of providing feedback to to the person that was helping out with the project, as well as considering all aspects of the playground that, that would make it useful for all students, not just certain ones. Uh, what are some of the lessons you think the students have learned from this project? Well, at first I was thinking mostly of the academic learning, which a lot of that took place. They learned... Um, in real life how area is used. They also wrote a lot of um, persuasive letters trying to persuade our superintendent, who by the way, um, we got to present to as well, um, and uh, other people that were our decision makers. So they were writing these persuasive pieces to have the kids choose their design or to have the decision makers choose their designs. And we also learned about social studies, goods and services, Um, kids learned also very important social skills. They learned how to collaborate, how to compromise, and how to take a different point of view. So kids um, learn not only academically, but PBL helps them socially as well. All right, awesome. Thank you for the insight into how PBL works at the elementary level. We have our student, Clara, here to talk to us about how PBL works at the secondary level. Clara, can you touch on a little bit about the project that that your class did? Yeah, of course. In the Masks We Wear project, we were required to make a cardboard mask that represented ourselves in either the topic of beauty, protection, power, or change. We needed to have some 3D parts that stood out and made in a mask that was fully paper mache and painted. We were then required to quit, create a few minute long slideshow about the process of our mask, our, instrument, our inspiration behind it, and what we learned. 
All right. That sounds like a great project. How is has this type of project been different from some of the other learning that you've done at school? Well, this project was more open to people and how they're more than what they seem at school. Other lessons could teach you about math, history, or language arts, but this project really got deeper into your personal self-image, and it really expressed the true art behind someone. Okay, and what are some of the lessons you gathered from the project-based way of learning versus maybe some more traditional learning that you've taken part in? I learned that sometimes you don't always know people as well as you think you do, and masks make a very good hiding place. You shouldn't always be so quick to assume you know someone just because in reality, there's always so much more to learn. Masks really have such a great importance because they can come off as a whole different person when you're wearing the mask. That's really great, Clara. Thank you for your insight. Nothing like uh, hearing straight from a student about how effective PBL is. Elizabeth, where can people find out more information about PBL at Waterford? So we actually have a page directly on our district website. So if you're on our website and you click on the academic tab, there is a drop down that says problem based learning. And when you go there, you can visit a world of sites, especially with our partnership with PBL Works. Um, and you can see everything that we could be working on. The possibilities are kind of endless within this. Yeah, sounds like it. All right. Thank you, Scott. What do you think about this conversation about PBL, especially given Claire's insight as a student um, experience this, experiencing this type of learning at Waterford? Well, I think one of the things Clara talked about and what I saw the students present uh, with Sue's class over at Grayson is this makes learning fun. When we're learning by doing and when kids have voice and when kids have choice, actually that's the same thing as adults. When we have voice and choice in what we're doing, uh, whether that's a project or some new learning, that just breeds ownership and leadership. And so this is a higher order uh, thinking and an opportunity for our kids. And the playground design that the kids uh, presented to me and a couple of my colleagues over at Grayson was so well done. I mean, it was a higher order. Uh, they talked about all of the kids that they involved in this project. It was amazing. And some people would say, well, Superintendent, what about all of the benchmarks? Well, those were all a part of it. The writing, the, the math, the interviewing, the uh, insightful uh, work that they did. It was just really great. So the relationship between learning and real life uh, problem solving is just uh, simply authentic and, and excellent. Thank you, Scott. I agree with you. And I think it's safe to say that PBL has been very successful here at Waterford and with much more to come. Thank you to all of you again for being here, Clara, Elizabeth, and Sue. I'm sure we'll be hearing more from all of you as uh, your PBL plans continue to develop. Well, I think that's a wrap on our first episode of WSD Voice. A special shout out to all of the guests who are here on the show today. And Scott, appreciate you stopping in to join us to launch the show. Well, great, Sarah. Thank you for having me on the show. I truly enjoyed myself and I just love the opportunity to talk about the good news of our district and the good news of what our students are learning and how they're learning and being engaged in all the things going on in the classrooms. I'm excited to see what other episodes you have in store. Absolutely. We're working on some great topics, and we'll want you back for sure. Great. Thank you to our new audience for listening. We hope you enjoyed this first episode of WSD Voice. This podcast was brought to you by Waterford School District's Department of School and Community Services and is produced by video production coordinator, Jane Tickelly. I am the host of this podcast, Sarah Davis, and you can find all episodes of WSD Voice on our website at waterford.k12.mi.us. We encourage you to continue to tune in as we discuss topics geared toward inspiring, educating and empowering our students, staff, alumni, and community.